Oh, we are back at it again with another crazy core count system. So Intel sent over this care package with some bananas stuff in it. So we've got an entire tray I mean, technically it is an entire tray, even if it's only 60% full of actual things, of their new Xeon W chips for workstations. We've got, oh, this one's really good. Their top of the line 28 core processor, that's the Xeon 8180, and another one. They sent two. These are unrelated, they're cool too though. So that's 56 cores on a single motherboard. There are only two words to adequately describe this kind of speed. Holy shit. Today's video is brought to you by Origin PC. Origin PC offers beautiful custom desktops, high performance laptops, and lifetime 24 seven technical support. They only use high quality products like Samsung's 960 Pro M.2 SSDs, and you can visit Origin PC at the link below to learn more. Now, Intel has come under fire over the last number of years for their CPU innovation is dead. Let's call it a passive approach to bringing more cores to the mainstream consumer. But this is not so in the enterprise space where supercomputing and the cloud have driven demand for CPUs with ever higher core counts and with customers who are ready to pay for the engineering involved in creating them. So in the last five years, we've gone from the 2697V2, that's a 12 core, to this. This is the Xeon Platinum 8180. 28 cores in here, that is over double the core count in less than five years. Each one of these chips can support up to 768 gigabytes of memory. The uh, M variant can actually do 1.5 terabytes each and is equipped with 48 PCI Express lanes, a whopping six channels of DDR4-2666 memory each. So this is 12 sticks here. We're gonna be using all of these and three QPI links for high-speed communication in multi-chip configurations with up to four of them being able to communicate directly to each of the others. But all of that comes at a cost. Intel has been forced to use a significantly larger socket, like physically larger, with many more pins. And what that means is that there will be zero interoperability between these high-end server chips and prosumer or workstation, be they single socket or dual socket motherboards like we've enjoyed for the last few generations. Hold on a second. Is this gonna be a problem? Always one to defy expectations. Asus has created something truly special for all the folks out there that disagree with Intel's assessment. So let's then have a look at the WSC621E Sage. It has quite literally everything. I mean, Asus's engineers don't seem to have stressed out too much about the question of, is it necessary? It's got support for four U.2 drives. Who puts four U.2 drives in a system? So we got two 3647 sockets. We've got 12 memory slots. Like look at how much of this board is dedicated to just memory and CPU sockets. So look, 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 look at this. It's got a micro SD slot because I don't know, maybe you want to run some like Linux distro off of micro SD. Seven PCI Express 16X slots with three of them wired up at 8X. It's got a VGA header. Can't go wrong with that. I guess now all that's really left is to put it together and maybe run some benchmarks. I am super duper not a fan of this socket. The retention mechanism is, I shit you not, to put a heat sink on top of it and screw it down, which is terrifying because in 100% of cases so far, 
I have had the suction of the thermal compound lift the CPU out at the same time. Now the conventional wisdom when it comes to thermal compound is generally less is more. But if we're being realistic, you know, these coolers weren't gonna help me break any overclocking records anyway. These were the only things I could find with compatibility with the square ILM design versus the narrow one that were also readily available. Although, Swift Tech did up a couple of custom blocks for this socket. Almost no one else is even talking about support for this socket yet. Oh, it's heavy. 56 processing cores. Now, we gotta keep it fed with data. I mean, that's one of the big design concerns every time is how are you gonna keep that thing fed? So what I'm installing right now from Kingston, top of the line as far as server memory speed goes. So these are 26, 66 megahertz and a whopping six channels per CPU. It is an effective six Xing of the total memory bandwidth per CPU. Oh, it's even more beautiful assembled. 56 cores, 384 gigabytes of memory. And that amount was actually chosen for a pretty specific reason. So you guys are probably familiar with the Seven Gamers One CPU project where we had seven discrete gaming rigs running off of a single motherboard. When we did that, we were using 18 core CPUs and I kind of went, okay, 36 cores. Well, now we've got so many that if we were to do six workstations, like 8K video editing workstations, each one of them could have, oh, that worked out too, nine cores per video editing system. Like that is enough for a bona fide workstation. So I would consider an eight core, 64 gig workstation. We're gonna try and find some single slot cards so everyone gets a dedicated GPU. I would consider that a very capable workstation and I want the whole thing powered off of a single motherboard. Okay, we're in. Dare me to enable the turbo ratio lock to keep the processor operating at the turbo highest frequency for the maximum performance. What does that even mean, you guys? It means make it go more faster. Let's try it. It's funny, people would always ask me back when I used a RAID card running eight SSDs in RAID zero for my boot drive. People would always ask me like, oh, how fast are your boot times? Uh, it was not about boot time. SSDs were never about boot time. It was always about speed once you're booted. So I don't want to deal with the amount of screeching that I would have to deal with if I don't immediately fire up Cinebench. Speaking of which, okay, okay. People have asked me for examples of this. The terribleness of the Windows search. C, okay, that all makes sense. I, sure. Okay, uh, not really sure how we're getting there. Oh, Cine, okay, now I can get Cinebench. But watch this, watch this. B, it's gone. Here we go. Whoa, look at that turbo speed. Just shy of 7,000 in Cinebench. That is 56 cores, 112 threads. Let's see it again, my friends. What? It's like it's warmed up or something. I came up with something that will let us hit it hard for an extended period. When you mine burst coin, you have to do something called plotting. So I'm gonna run six instances of the plotting software to see how much we can make it scream. 100% utilization at 2.9 gigahertz. So somewhere between 150,000 and 200,000 nonces per minute, which if you're into burst coin, you will know is pretty freaking impressive for anything that is not a GPU. Obviously though, this isn't the only thing we're gonna run on these things. Let us know in the comments below, what kind of loads do you wanna see run? Because we're gonna have a full video following this one up soon. So what can it handle? What can't it handle? We're here to satisfy your curiosity and satisfy you in other ways. Like by telling you about Ting the mobile carrier that makes sense. With Ting, you get to talk to an actual person if you ever have to call their customer support for any reason, go figure, and you don't even have to pay extra for the privilege. With Ting, the average bill is just $23 a month per
per device, and they've got new lower data rates, just $10 a gig past the first gig. So why wait? Pay for only what you use. Try out the Ting savings calculator at linus.ting.com. We're gonna have that linked below and find out how much you would save. So thanks for watching guys. If you disliked this video, you can hit that button. But if you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. Like unless you're running a data center or like building a new supercomputer, it seems kind of unlikely, but hey, you never know. While you're down there, you can check out our merch store, which has cool t-shirts like this one and our community forum, which you should totally join.